Hey everyone and welcome back to another Mining Chamber video. In today's video we are going to go over your BIOS settings and everything you need to know when it comes to your BIOS. So let's go ahead and get into the video right after the intro. Setting up the proper settings for your BIOS is an important part of building your mining rig. Now most of the time if you have a mining dedicated motherboard you don't have to change any settings everything is automatically set properly for you but in some scenarios you'll have to open up your BIOS settings and troubleshoot from there if you're running into any issues that can lead to your mining rig not running properly or some GPUs not showing up on your mining software. Now the first thing I want to mention is all the BIOS are not the same so you might have different settings you might have different wording for your settings but ultimately the options will be very very similar so if I go over something in this video and you don't have exactly the same words just try to look for something similar to it and now let's say worst case scenario you've accidentally put a wrong settings on your BIOS and then you can't post anymore you can always do a CMOS reset and that's basically resetting your BIOS to default settings so this is something really good to know because it's usually the fix for a lot of problems if your motherboard is just not posting at all and you're not getting any display and it's not a CPU compatibility issues or any hardware issues then a CMOS reset will most likely help you out to do a CMOS reset it's very simple all you need to do is you want to unplug your power supply from the wall make sure there's no power coming to your rig at all and then from there you just want to take out that little battery on your motherboard there is a little trigger next to it where you push it in and then the battery will just pop out and after the battery pops out just put it to the side for now and then you want to hold the power button while the rig is off for 30 to 60 seconds I usually just hold it for 60 seconds to make sure that it successfully resetted your BIOS settings and then after that you can go ahead and put the battery back in and then you can plug in your power supply back into the wall now with having that done it basically resetted the memory for your BIOS settings on the motherboard and then everything is back to stock so now that's enough about the CM most reset now I hope you guys understand what it is and know when to use it now we can go ahead and move on to the settings so the settings will be in three different parts first you have the essential settings these are the ones that you definitely want to keep an eye on and make sure you have them set properly the second ones will be optional settings that can benefit you if you choose to use them and then we also have the USB booting settings and that's for people that want to use a USB for their operating system whether it's HiveOS or any other mining Linux operating system and that section will be especially helpful if you're also planning on running another hard drive with it or an SSD with a different operating system for example for your personal computer so in this video I'm using my MSI Z270 gaming m5 motherboard as an example for the BIOS settings now like I mentioned earlier you might have some different wordings and you might have a fully different layout for your menu but don't worry it should be the same concept now to get into your BIOS you want to figure out what's your BIOS hotkey you can find that in your motherboards manual or you can just look up your motherboards name and then hotkey for BIOS usually it's the delete or escape key so in my case it was the delete key and all you have to do is the moment you turn on your rig start spamming your delete key just keep hitting on it until you see that menu pop up and then once that menu pops up you're good to go there is also another menu called the boot menu and if you get that boot menu instead of the BIOS menu you might find an option there that says enter setup so just navigate to the enter setup and then you'll be good to go so the first settings I want to look for is the PCIe gen speed as well as the mining mode for my motherboard and I was able to find those in the PCIe subsystem settings. So after I open up my PCIe subsystem settings you guys can see here I have the PCIe graphics card max link speed. So this is where you select the gen speed for your graphic cards to be running on. Now generally it's usually on auto but if you're planning on running more than two graphic cards I would usually recommend setting it on gen 2 and that should work most of the time. And if you still have troubles if you trying to run for example 13 cards you can try to set it on gen 1 now the reason for the settings is because your graphic cards don't need to run on the full gen speed they can run on a lower gen and they'll be completely fine for mining now I'm not sure if it will affect your gaming performance but you can feel free to try it and then change it whenever you want so here in this motherboard I have two places where I have to set them to gen 2 you might have more than two places but just look around for any places that have auto and gen 1 and gen 2 and 3 and then just change them to gen 2 there is also the PCIe latency timer option and usually you don't have to change that one at all having it as default is completely fine but in some scenarios if you're having troubles with your GPUs and for example when you're running your mining software as soon as you make the DAG file it starts crashing or acting weird then this is one of the 
settings that you might want to go back to and try to change it. Ideally, you can put it up to 94 or higher. And what that setting does is just controls how long each PCIe device can hold the bus before another one takes over. So like I mentioned, you don't need to focus on the settings unless you're running into issues. So just leave it as default for now and come back to it if it's the last option you have. And then after that setting, you also have the mining mode or 4G decoding. Sometimes they are two different options, but in this scenario, they're both together. So mining mode and 4G decoding needs to be on if you're planning on mining with more than just one GPU. And even if you're mining with just one GPU, just turn them on. It won't affect your motherboard or your gaming performance in any bad way. So just have that setting on and then you should be good to go. In some scenarios, when you're booting your mining rig and you just see a pitch black screen and you don't even see the BIOS, it can sometimes be due to the 4G decoding to being turned off. So in that case, you want to unplug all your GPUs except one and then boot into your BIOS, turn on 4G decoding or mining mode, and then plug in the rest of the GPUs after you turn your rig off. Make sure when you're unplugging and plugging off GPUs, your rig is completely off and handle everything with care. Now the last essential settings is the one that deals with your display. So usually you want your display to come out of your motherboard rather than the GPUs. It makes everything a lot easier. You can just troubleshoot your GPUs freely and unplug them and plug them back in without having to worry about the display. So not every motherboard and CPU has this capability. You first need to make sure you have integrated graphics and to do that you just want to look at your motherboard. If you have any display output such as HDMI or DVI then that means you most likely have integrated graphics. So the next step you want to do is you want to go through your BIOS settings and then you want to find your graphics settings and set that to IGD which also stands for integrated graphics. Now PEG stands for PCIe graphics and that's for the GPUs. So it's better to just have that resource come out of your motherboard and CPU rather than from your GPU. And it's especially useful when you're trying to BIOS mod and all that stuff as well. So now that wraps it up for the essential settings and now we can go ahead and move on to the optional settings. The first setting we have in the optional settings is the AC power. So what this option does, here is a good example for it. Let's say you live somewhere where the power goes out very frequently. So if the power goes out, your mining rig will turn off. So having this option set as on or power on or last state based on what BIOS you're using, what it will do is the moment you get power again, the rig will turn automatically right on. So the moment your motherboard gets power, it will turn on without you having to turn it on manually. Now, if you decide to shut down your rig manually, it won't turn on right away, so you don't need to worry about that. But this can be pretty useful if you just want to plug your rig, it turns on right away. And if you're worried of power loss and then you just want it to turn back on right away, then this is a good option to keep on. One of the best tricks I found with this option was using smart plugs, especially if you're mining on HiveOS. You can just have a smart plug connected to the rig and then you can turn the rig off and on just through your phone by turning off the smart plug and then turning it back on. In a way, it will resemble your electricity turning off and then it's turning back on. And that can be useful if your rig is stuck and on HiveOS it's showing offline, then you can just try to reboot it that way and then it might work completely fine. So other than the AC power, there's other multiple options that people decide to turn off. For example, your audio controller on your motherboard and what that does is just turns off the actual physical ports on your motherboard and I don't know exactly why people do it. I think it's to reduce the power usage but at the end of the day, it won't take that much. You can feel free to turn off anything that's not being used. So for example, your audio controllers, all these additional USB ports and a bunch of these SATA ports as well. But again, I don't think it will make that much of a difference so you can feel free to leave it on. It's not a problem at all. Now in the optional settings, there is also flashing your motherboard's BIOS and usually you don't have to flash your motherboard's BIOS, but if you do have a really outdated motherboard BIOS or you did all the troubleshooting steps and you're still having troubles, then you can try to resort to flashing your motherboard's BIOS. All you need to do is just go to your motherboard's support page, find the latest BIOS, put it on your USB stick, and then come to the BIOS and then choose the flashing utility. If you need more information on that, every motherboard has a specific guide to it to do it on their manual, so feel free to check that out. 
So now that wraps up the optional settings, now we can talk about the USB booting settings. So these settings are only if you're planning on using a USB stick to boot into it. So if you have HiveOS flashed on a USB stick or any other mining operating system, then you want to check out this section of the video. If not, then you can feel free to skip to the outro. Now the first thing you want to look for is the boot mode. And in the boot mode, you want to make sure you have legacy and UEFI set. Sometimes you'll have this differently. For example, you might have a completely different option that will say legacy support or CSM support. And you just want to make sure you enable that. And in some scenarios, you will also have an option that says USB boot support so you also want to enable that as well and then after that you also have your boot order priority in your boot order priority it's basically what your mining rig will look for when it's booting in so if you put your first option as a USB stick for Hive OS your mining rig will always go to that one first and if it doesn't find it it will go to the second option so this is very useful if you're doing dual booting and you have Windows SSD as well as a Hive OS on a USB stick so like that you can tell your rig to boot into which one you want first and then from there you move forward this topic is heavily documented on the internet Internet. If you have any further questions, just look up your motherboard's model and then the question you have and I'm sure you will find the answer. So now that covers the BIOS settings, I hope you guys have now a better idea of what to do when you're in the BIOS and what to change when you're in there as well. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video. The next video that will be coming up will be which operating system should you be using, which will be the best next step from this video. And if you haven't built your mining rig yet, then I highly recommend checking out the mining rig build guide, which is the video that came out before this one. The link for it will be in the descriptions below. Now that wraps up the video. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I'm curious to know if you had any settings that you needed to change to get your mining rig going. Please let me know in the comments as well. I'm sure there's a lot of things I could have covered, but I just didn't come across. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. This video is focused on the basics as well as the next one, but I will be posting a lot more entertaining content very soon. So thank you guys again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.